All right, so um, if I go to the next slide, um, so thank you again for joining the session. Um, so maybe for some of you who's not familiar with CT Lab before, um, so we are the manufacturers of Vector 3, which is a power quality recorder. Um, we have a few legacy devices that you may have seen somewhere before, like the Impedo Dio, um, Vector Graph, um, Impedo Graph, and um, legacy devices. But the latest device that we have is the Vector 3. Um, and then the licensed software that we develop is called Osprey Pro. We also have a free offline version that's available to all clients um, called Osprey Lite. Now, we have uh, a sweet name that we call Otella. Full complete solution um, software up to the license and the software that you um, can view the data and going forward. So what is Osprey Pro? Osprey Pro is a highly advanced and distributed time synchronized multifunctional monitoring and control system for electrical networks. So it's, it's cloud based um, and we've developed it from the ground up with a big development team to support up to thousands of permanent connected devices. Um, and up to hundreds of simultaneous connected users. Um, the device is always or permanently online, uh, meaning that the data is accessible in near real time. You don't need any software. You only need an internet connection. Um, so you can actually gain access to Osprey Pro from any device with the internet connection, being that your mobile phone, um, even when you're on site, you know, you can have access to that as well. Osprey Pro and with the hardware and the GPS, we the aim is to make sure that the system is clock synchronized um, up to 100 nanoseconds. And that is very important when we get to um, one of the features that I will cover in a later uh, slide in today's session called incident matching. Um, so I will get to that, but just so that you know, with the GPS antennas, the the system is permanently clock synchronized up to 100 nanoseconds. All right, we um, exploit edge computing. Um, so for, for those of you that's not familiar with the term, it basically means that the on the instrument, the device itself, there's Linux installed um, and all the processing and um, so on is done on the instrument itself. Um, and that data is then sent to the Osprey Pro database for you to then record uh, to view um, and analyze. OK, um, this is the physical appearance of uh, the Vector 3. It looks identical to the Vector 2, uh, the previous version um, of the Vector 3 with the main um, I'll say change is that the Vector 3 has got a built-in cellular modem, whereas the Vector 2 you used to or you had to install an external modem um, to be able to communicate over the cellular um, network. So, so I will not go into too much detail on um, specifically each terminal and all the ratings that we will cover in the next session, which is the installation and commissioning session uh, we are going in more detail on what the specific ratings are um, how to install it for specific applications and then also how to commission the vector 3 um, by using either osprey Lite if you don't have osprey pro or um, also a latest feature that we have is the web interface that's built into the vector 3. so that's the um, most simpler solution and I will actually demonstrate the web interface and just show that to you also in today's session um, and then also, also obviously Osprey Pro how to do commissioning on that um, in, in a session next month but if I can just quickly um, go over the instrument so it's IEC 61000-4-30 class A compliant um, we can power the instrument in three ways. So we have AC or DC, and then you can also actually power it over Ethernet by using PoE plus, uh, PoE plus injector. 
Then there's the voltage inputs. We have four voltage inputs. And then two ways to measure current, either using direct current um, or using a current transducer such as Rogowski coil, split core CT, or um, active sensors such as Hall effect sensors. Then we also have two sets of four digital inputs and then also four relay outputs, which you can actually um, configure with different monitors to trigger relays, which you can then communicate and um, send yeah, with your SCADA system as well. There's two, there's two POE um, inputs, oh, no, two Ethernet inputs, sorry. Um, the first one is used for your corporate network. So um, like it, it will function like a laptop in your corporate network. And then the second port, sorry, I think, I think someone, another user to control. Um, let me just try that over again. I'm not sure what happened now. Uh, am I back now, Danielle? Yes, I can see your screen again. OK, sorry for that. Um, so as I was saying, there's, there's two Ethernet ports, uh, and the second one is used for, um, we'll call it like engineering port, so you can directly communicate with the meter using port two. So if you want to do configuration on site, set it up, um, that's the port that you will be communicating to the instrument with as well. Then additionally, they we also have then the Wi-Fi, um, if I can add my, put on my laser, this is where the Wi-Fi antenna or stubby antenna is connected. That antenna, a Wi-Fi the device can be set up just so that you can directly communicate, communicate with it over Wi-Fi, or you can actually connect it to a Wi-Fi network. Um, and then similarly, we also have a cellular input for the cellular antenna um, with the SIM card, um, just beneath this front panel. Um, and then the GPS input to ensure that we get that 100 nanosecond clock synchronization uh, on the device as well. So as I said, um, we'll cover this in more detail in the next session. Um, but this is just an overview of the device. If I can go to the next slide. Um, so the, the the device can measure current, voltage, and um, harmonics and interharmonics, and this is carried out in every cycle. Now, the basic measurement time interval for the instrument is 10 cycles or 12 cycles, depending or 12, 10 or 12 cycle time intervals, depending on the frequency of your power system. Um, the instrument samples at 500 kilohertz and um, by using this 10, 12 cycle time intervals, um, we actually aggregate the values to get the different data streams. Um, so, and the, this, the aggregation are performed using the square root of the rhythmic mean of the um, squared input of the values. And from there, we can get 200 millisecond data um, and that is then aggregated further to three second data um, and then up to one minute to 24 minutes, which are then um, basically time um, sampled um, as well. So this is the different data that we, we can record. And for all of this, we have harmonics, um, all harmonics and interharmonics, as well as prevailing phases. The device can also record RMS and fundamental import, export, and net power. Um, yeah. All right, if I go to the next slide. Now, rather than recording the full waveform stream, we have event monitors that can be configured to record di diagnostic data, such as waveforms, the six cycle RMS and phaser, and 10 cycle or 12 cycle harmonic data. Now for all of these monitors, 
Um, data before, during, and after an event can be recorded, which will then provide you with useful information to analyze uh, the event. Now, as you can see, there's a different sort of, of monitors that you can set up. This can be set up on Osprey Lite or on Osprey Pro. Um, if we just look at the six cycle monitors, the voltage dip and swell, not to go into too much detail on that, um, but that is a, basically a, a momentary production of the voltage magnitude um, relative to the nominal voltage. Um, and this can occur on dif a different combination of phases. Then voltage interruption, um, which is for an outage, is a su su sustained reduction of the voltage magnitude relative to the nominal or uh, yeah the nominal voltage and that's can also occur on any combination of phases um, and then also we have rapid voltage changes significant voltage or current change current exceedance so that's some of the uh, six cycle monitors that you can set up to record then also um, if you look at the 10 cycle monitors which look at the well, the 10 cycle data streams. We have the THD exceedances, voltage unbalanced exceedances, and then over or under frequency. So, um, and then going on to 10 minute monitors, the same as well. So for all of these monitors, you can um, select what data you want to record, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, and you can also configure this to be connected to um, a specific relay. So, for example, should your should it be a voltage dip on the network, um, and you connect it to relay two, that re, you can that relay can close while that does the dip happens. So, if you have your skater that's smart enough, you can actually get the dip duration from that as well. Um, so, and there's four relays as I mentioned earlier. Um, and then going on, the last sort of monitors that we have is the 50 kilohertz. So, um, for for example, if you look at the fast transients, the fast transients take the raw waveform data and then put it through a very steep cutoff filter um, to basically filter that 50 hertz component. And then you end up with a signal that only contains the high frequency components. Um, and then on that high frequency component, you then put a threshold. Um, and when that threshold is exceeded in the high frequency component, it basically triggers as the fast transient. Voltage spike also, again, um, takes the raw waveform data. And when your voltage or rise above a certain threshold, so if you put that, for example, 150% of your nominal voltage for a period less than 20 milliseconds um, then that will trigger a voltage spike and then we also have digital inputs so you can set a monitor on an input to trigger yeah to trigger waveform recording by using that digital input as well all right um, okay so this before i start with the uh, osprey pro um, Cecilia mentioned earlier today that we can share with you um, a full document of our the releases and the updates that we have. So as I mentioned, we have a engineering team and a development team that is constantly developing new features, adding more functionality um, to you as well. So I think maybe Cecilia can share that document or we can make it available if you ask for it. Um, and then you can get a full list of what features has been added to Osprey Pro for those of you that haven't used it before and what all av are available. Um, for now, I'm just going to cover some of the new concepts that you may have, may have you haven't seen before. Um, so the first one is it's live online. Um, so I mentioned earlier that the system is permanently online. Um, meaning that data is always accessible um, on any device and the data is automatically pushed to Osprey Pro. 
Um, please note that I'm not covering Osprey Lite, so this is specifically for Osprey Pro. Osprey Lite um, will not be covered in today's session, but it is our offline software, which you can install on your PC. But for Osprey Lite, you need to connect to the device and then record the data or download the data from the device to be able to access and view it. When Osprey Pro, the data is automatically pushed to the cloud um, and you can access that from any device. Right, the next concept, Alarma notifications. Um, now, traditionally in the past, data was recorded to a central database um, called a historian, and that data was, uh, well, in a control room. And from here, the data is then processed and made available to colleagues in the company or whoever needs that data. Now, what we try to achieve with the Llama notifications with Osprey Pro is to push this data to individuals, not necessarily, um, you know, just a corporate or a section, but to spread the information throughout the organization. Um, the data can be shown to, to each individual in a format that they understand and that is relevant to their work. So you can, as an individual with access to Osprey Pro, configure your own notifications that you want to receive based on what your function is in the company. Um, so this will not just assist you to, um, you know, make business decisions, but also in your daily operations. Um, for example, if you are in charge of quality of supply, um, with the alarm, alarm, you can get a notification as soon as there's any event triggered. For example, if there's a voltage dip, and that will be sent to you via an email, and you can gain access to that dip immediately. Um, so with each alarm or uh, email, you'll get a link that you can then that will take you to Osprey Pro um, that will then show you the data for that event. Um, and this is, I think, really beneficial um, for customers in their daily operations and to incorporate this in their work. Uh, you know, not just use it as a once in a month or generating report at the end of the, of the month, but um, yeah, to really help you make decision, decisions or see when there's something happening in your network. Uh, the next concept is matching of incidents. Now, the matching of incidents combines events recorded by multiple devices at different locations for a single incident into one incident. So, if they, if you have multiple devices recorded in your network, um, and there's an event that happens, and that event is recorded by all, by some of your or more than one of your instruments. Then Osprey Pro matches that by using the clock synchronization that we have and groups it into one incident. And this will allow you to immediately be able to identify where in the network or in what zone a fault happened. And then you can you know, analyze the incident to determine the cause of the incident. Now, um, what I have on the, the presentation is uh, just as I know it's small to see, but it's a dashboard of how that is grouped. Um, now, we'll show and demonstrate that to you later, but another function that's built into Osprey Pro is the ability to then annotate incidents and add additional information, such as the root cause of the fault, uh, the responsible party, the voltage level, network area, and also what equipment is affected. So, this or these data can then this data can be used to report on and use in reports. So in tables and other dashboards that we've developed as well. So we try to develop this so that you as a client can provide as much detail to a specific incident and then report on that, uh, which can then be sent um, or, you know, um, yeah, a report on that as well. So and this is really beneficial if you want to, to you know keep track of what happens over time get some statistical um overview of what happens in your network how it's performing 
and, and so on. Um, and I will demonstrate that just briefly as well. Now, one example of um, the PQ dashboards that I'm speaking of is the one that I'm showing on the screen. And this is the current enterprise performance. Now, with this dashboard, we look at your whole enterprise of devices and determine um, the, you know, basically what is your power quality. If we look at your unbalance, we look at your voltage regulation, THD, and then give you an idea of how close or far you exceed um, or how far below threshold you are. Um, and then we have other dashboards such as the um, enterprise PQ overview um, and network disturbance that I will also show to you as well that provides the operator with the ability to correlate various aspects of power quality incidents um, with each other. Um, and, and I'll show that to you as well. So, yeah. All right. Then also we have um, a, a, a concept we call measurement campaigns. Now, a measurement campaign allows you to create a central measurement template um, or campaign that is then set up to measure certain trends or certain events. Um, and the campaign can therefore define what data you want the instrument to collect. Now, rather than in the past setting up each device individually, you can um, use the measurement campaign and enable that on Osprey Pro, and this will automatically um, basically configure all your devices to at least be configured with this template. Um, so all of the devices that's been commissioned on Osprey Pro will inherit that template that was set up. So that makes commissioning easier, um, allows that well, yeah, make sure that you don't make mistakes um, or enable something that you actually don't want to enable. Um, and it's also then easy for everyone to, um, to use. All right, then another function, I've talked a bit about data enrichment. That's just through trains, gra graphical trains that I will show, tables, the power quality dashboards that we have, and then we have we also have the ability to generate reports, um, which I will show later in the session as well. But the last new concept is fleet management. So Osprey Pro gives you the ability to manage your fleet and um, it monitors the instrument telemetry and then give you a fleet management dashboard, which you can then use um, to see if your instruments are operating correctly or identify if there's an issue with, the, your, with your instrument. So I think this is very powerful um, so that you know if your instrument is online, is it performing as it's supposed to? Is there any issue with um, clock synchronization, data connectivity, or anything like that for you to be sh make sure that you have your device operating as it should and have data available when you want to record it. Um, I think the last thing that we want is for you to generate a report in the end of the month and then you don't have enough data to report on. Um, and this fleet management just gives you the ability to keep track of your fleet and make sure that it is um, still operational and everything is fine. Uh, you can also set up notifications um, to notify you if there's something wrong with your fleet. So if it loses connection, stops recording for any reason. Um, so that will also then give you quick feedback if something is wrong and you don't have a few days that you maybe miss before you see there's an issue with the device. All right, then just before I do a demonstration, some other main functionalities on Osprey Pro. I, I briefly mentioned the trend browser. On the trend browser, you can view various types of trends. Um, there's also advanced JavaScript that you can um, basically use to um, change the, the graph, do some analysis on it. 
Um, so you don't necessarily need to export the data and then um, run a script on it. That can actually be done on Osprey Pro. We have an event browser, cross trigger, um, and snapshots, um, real time view. So the ability to view what the device is recording in real time. Tele telemetry, as I mentioned earlier, that records the, the telemetry of the instrument, um, such as the battery voltage, the, um, you know, the uh, how full it's charged, all, all of that. Um, we also have billing. Um, with billing, we have the ability to set up tariffs and supply contracts. Now, you can, it's, it's quite advanced. You can do time of use tariffs um, and set up import and export tariffs. For example, if there's in, in renewable industry, um, you sometimes have, you have two tariffs for your import and then for your export. And you have the ability to set that up and then connect that to a supply contract to that specific um, measurement point to, and then generate a report on that bill, which you can then compare with the bill that you get from the utility. Then also reporting. Um, now we have two ways of generating reports. There's ad hoc reports. Ad hoc reports is if you want to generate a report on the fly. Um, and then also scheduled reports. Um, and this is if you want to schedule a report to be sent to you frequently, so weekly, monthly, um, whatever you want. And this really optimizes that process for you. So for example, if you want to view site assessment reports or billing reports monthly, you have the ability to set that up once and then you can um, get that or that report will be sent to you via email in PDF or in Word format um, at the specific time that you choose. And then obviously data export in different, um, yeah, different uh, formats as well. All right, I think um, at this point, I would like to, to jump over um, the end of slide and, and rather jump over to Osprey Pro and go through all of these um, a bit slower. And if you have any questions, maybe you can ask me that as well. I'm first going to maybe just demonstrate the web interface. So let me just stop the presentation. Hi, just remind us quickly, what is the web interface about again? So yeah, thanks Cecilia. The web interface was developed so with so give to give you the ability to configure the device um, without having any software. So you don't need Osprey Pro or Osprey Lite on your device to configure the device. Now, web, the web interface runs on the instrument itself. So you only need the connection to the instrument using a LAN cable or even the Wi-Fi. Um, and that you can then use to set up the measurement point do the whole configuration and also set up your Ethernet settings or um, anything else that you want as well. So this really makes it easier to, to use rather than using Osprey Lite. So you can actually use the web interface to do your complete setup. Now, the web interface was not developed to analyze data, so you can't download data and view data on the web interface but you can um, configure the device on that. So if you can quickly share my screen. Let me just open that up. Cecilia, can you see my screen? Perfectly, thanks. Thanks, Cecilia. So I've connected to the this a specific instrument using its IP address. Um, and I've logged into the web interface. Now with each device, you will get a memory stick and on that memory stick, there will be a guide on how to log into the web interface and gain access to it um, on site. So I'm connecting to this device via VPN. Um, you can get some basic information on uh, what's the serial number, on what software version it is, calibration date and so on. You can you also have access to the documentation as well. Now, um, 
the web interface is not enabled by default in the instrument. So that needs to be enabled before you can gain access to it. Now it's it's actually easy to use or to do it. Now that me memory stick that we provided, if you plug that into the device, the device will run a script basically to enable the web interface for you. So th this is just a security um, thing so that it's not, so that no one can just, you know, get access to the device um, at any point, but you first need to enable it by using that memory stick. And on that memory stick is the key as well. Uh, so it's a specific key that, that you use to register this instrument. Um, some of you are familiar with that key on Osprey Lite where you need to register it. Um, so yeah, you just plug that into the device for 30 seconds and that will then open or enable the web interface and you can then gain access to it um, as then explained in the guide. So the web interface, there's a few tabs here on the top. Um, the first one that I'll show you is you can set up the comms. So this is for your ethernet. So currently this is set up for DHCP, but you can set up the IP, uh, provide a static IP, set up the net mask, gateway and DNS um, on here. The modem can be enabled. So if you're using a cellular connection, you can provide the APN. So in South Africa, if you buy a license for us for Osprey Pro, we provide you with a SIM card, um, a Vodacom SIM card with data on it. Um, and then we'll provide you with this information that you just need to set up in the modem for this device to connect with Osprey Pro. And then the last one is you can also enable the Wi-Fi. Now the Wi-Fi can be used in two ways, right? either using an access point. Um, so basically creating an access point on the device so that you can connect to it directly, or you can connect the device to an infrastructure or to an existing Wi-Fi network um, to then gain access through that to Osprey Pro, for example. So this is the comm section. Then the measurement point. I'm not going to go through this. Um, this is an existing measurement point that was set up for one of our clients. You can do you can do this on the instrument itself. It's a step by step process. So you provide the the name. You go through it step by step, um, and it's a lot easier than it used to be on Osprey Lite. Um, to do the whole measurement point set up. Now I will cover this also in more detail in the next uh, PowerPoint next month. Uh, but once you've set it up, um, also a nice feature on the web interface is to view the real time. So you can actually read a block of data or you can get a continuous read of what this device is currently recording. So if I, for example, click on read a block, it will give me the voltages, the RMS um, with the waveforms, and you can make sure that you've set it up correctly and that the values that you're recording is also what you expect um, after the device. And then lastly, you can view the status. So this will provide you with information such as the latitude, longitude, um, does it, is it GPS synchronized, what's the temperature, information like that um, so that you just know it is connected and there's no issue with the instrument. So is there maybe before I continue to ask you for any questions on the web interface? All right. Now Osprey Pro, um, as I said in the beginning of today's session, is our licensed software. It is cloud-based, so um, it was specifically developed for Google Chrome. So I recommended to use Google Chrome for that. Um, and this is, yeah, this is what you get when when you log into Osprey Pro. Um, it looks similar to the web interface, um, but yeah, they, you can. Um, there's obviously a lot more that you can do in Osprey Pro. So if I just take it from left to right, quickly, briefly going over it, um, 
the first thing that I mentioned was that you can set up your notifications. Now on the home page under the issues tab is where you can view any push notifications that you've received. So you can set up notifications for either email or for push notifications. And by using push notifications, you can get uh, notifications on your browser on Osprey Pro directly. Um, for me, I've disabled this, as you can see, um, but this is where we'll see if there's any issues with your fleet health or any other issue notifications such as disturbances or events that was triggered. Now, to set up um, notifications, that's under home profile and then subscriptions. So I'm not going to go through each one of them, but that you can see there's quite a long list of notifications that you can set up for yourself individually. All right, so I'm just going to cover some of the, the main or new concepts that we have. Um, so I mentioned the matching of incidents and that you will get under the power quality tab. Um, so this power quality was tab was specifically developed to give you with dashboards and data to analyze events and incidents that happened on um, your network. For example, under the power quality, you'll see this is four tabs. The first one gives you a list of events um, or incidents that's happened in the past. So you can see seven hours ago, there was an incident um, and you can scroll through them um, like this. With each one of them, it will provide you with you know, the, the residual voltage, the duration of the event, when it happened, um, and you can click individually on the event to get more information on that. So, for example, if I click on this event, it will provide me with more information of what happened. So let me just see if I can get a nice event for you to view. For example, like this. So what happened here, yeah, there was three recorders captured a uh, event and it was grouped into one incident. Um, and you can view each one of individually. So this is the spark line. So you can see the voltage, RMS voltage, current power, and then the reactive power. Um, and then if you click on them, it will give you the RMS voltage and more um, detail on the right side. You can get the waveform data as well by clicking on fetch simplified waveforms. This will provide you with the waveform of, for example, the um, voltage and then the current power and so on. So there's two ways that you can generate waveforms. It's the simplified waveform or the raw waveform um, that actually takes the 50 kilohertz sample data and provide you that waveform. So in this event, you can see it was a dip type Y. Um, as you can see, it's classified on the NRS scatter plot. Um, you can see how deep the dip was, what was the duration, and then also provide you with the source direction. Is it up the upstream or downstream? Now on Osprey Pro, you have your. We also give you the ability to view the geo mapping or to upload a single line diagram um, of where you've connected this in your, your network as well. And when there's an event or incident like this, only the recorders that actually triggered the, or recorded the event will show on the, on the single line diagram. So this makes it easier for you to get an idea of when the network um, uh, event happened. There's a small button on the right side here that make that you can just you can scroll through different international standards and um, and so on to get an idea of how this event would have affected some of your equipment such as the variable speed drives um, and so forth. Right. So I also mentioned that you have the ability to annotate events and that you can do by providing a course to it. So there's this button here. If you click on this, 
it will take you to a page where you can provide extra information to it, such as uh, the short description, um, maybe more detailed description of what happened, who's the responsible party, you know, what circuit it originated from, and so on. You can modify the classification, so you can add as many classifications to your, as that you want. For example, nature, um, lightning, different sort of events, load shedding, that you can classify this event to, and then later report on this, um, that I will also show to you on a, on a dashboard. You can provide what effects, what, you know, did this cause any damage to instruments or to anything on your network? And if you register this, it will then save and be, you know, saved as a uh, data for this specific event. There's also the ability to provide, to add tags. Now, the main functionality for tags that I use tags for is to make filtering of events easier. So if you have 100 events and you only want to filter for, um, for example, nature events that was influenced by nature or storms, you can set a tag for it. Um, so you can create one um, and then add this tag to the specific event. And then if you want to filter for it, you can filter for that event and only view the events for that specific tag. So this is also a very powerful tool as well. And then another button is the report um, which will generate the report for the specific incident. All right, now, so this is all your current issues that hasn't been closed. Once you've seen the event, you've maybe annotated it, you've dealt with this event, you can close it from the list. This will remove the incident from your issues list. Um, but you can still view it by going to your issue history. Um, and this is where you can, as you can see this, if you have, if you add any tags, it will show you and you can filter for specific tags. So on the issue history is where you can filter, for example, you only want to view events or incidents that happened at a specific measurement point and in a specific period. Um, and that will then, um, basically download the um, events for for that um, what you've set up for that period. All right, and then next we also have dashboards. I mentioned quickly in the presentation that we have the current enterprise uh, dashboard. This will just show you if there's any issues with your voltage magnitude, voltage unbalance, distortion or flicker at this moment of time. So everything can, you can see is within the limits, and this is now compared to the NRS um, 048 or whatever limit is relevant to, yeah, to you. All right. And the next dashboard is the power quality performance dashboard. Give you an indication of how that specific power quality parameters are performing. Um, so for example, if I filter for only, um, this is for over the last 30 days. You can also get changes for the last month. Um, and I click on one of these, it will show the, or let's rather make it this one. It will show me my 95th percentile voltage regulation over time, over the last month. So you can, to give you an idea if something happens, if there's a dip, you know, something happened. Um, yeah, so it's just an overview to see if there's any power quality issues. And then the last one is just network disturbance summary. Um, and this is, I won't be able to demonstrate this properly, but just to give you an idea, it will, for example, show you over the last 30 days, so I can filter it for any period I want, what, what was the different classifications of events, on what voltage level that they happen. And if you start annotating the events and providing classifications, then that will also show up on this table. So you'll, for example, be able to then, you know, generate this table and know the amount of load shedding events that happened or the number of whatever um, event 
you'll be able to then report on. And these drafts can all be exported um, in PNG, CSV or um, SVG format. You also get some statistical um, overview, the hour of day, day of the week. So if you obviously look over a, a longer period of time, you may be able to get some um, information on the statistical um, the how your network is performing in terms of that different seasons of the year, uh, different times of day or so on. All right, so that, that, that is briefly the power quality portal. Also explain that we have... Uh, sorry, Hein. Yes. There, was a, there was a hand up. Maybe you can ask about the previous slide. Okay. There is a hand up from static. Yes. Any, any question? Uh, yeah, my question is mostly based on the alarm notification. You okay. might have said okay. it. Yeah, alarm notification. You might have said it, but it was not very clear for me. Uh, because uh, one of our major problems on site is uh, the customer who doesn't want us to connect the instrument on their network for security reasons. Uh, then uh, you, did you, how are, then are we going to receive notification of alarms if uh, we are not connected on, on, on internet because we cannot connect on the, the, the network of the customer? Uh, that was the first question. And then the second one is, if I heard about providing a SIM card, if we really have that SIM card, where is it connected? Where is it on the instrument? Where do we put it really physically? Okay, so, uh, yeah, yeah, so, so quickly, just on the second question, um, the SIM card is just beneath the front panel of the device. Um, no, I haven't actually gone in too much detail on that because uh, the idea was to cover that in the installation and commissioning part of the session or training next next um, month. Um, but you will need a spline key bit, so it's a, a spline key screwdriver or bit to remove the front panel. And below the front panel, there is access to install the SIM card. Um, so it's quite easy to do. Um, and you can then just um, just make sure the power is off and the battery is disconnected um, from the device when you install that. Now back to the the first question. Um, now it, for for scenarios where the client is sometimes hesitant in terms of security, what we normally propose is that we set up a VPN tunnel directly to them to their network. So this will ensure that you know, in terms of security, um, that you still have that. And then via that VPN tunnel, we'll still be able to, um, you know, provide you with notifications. If you do not have any access to internet um, from the instrument, unfortunately, Osprey Pro um, will not work as it is a cloud-based platform. So you need internet access in, in some way. Um, so either through the corporate network, uh, you can now that can be by using a VPN tunnel um, directly to us, or uh, as I said, SIM card with a cellular connection. So maybe um, we can have a discussion um, if you can contact me um, after the session, and we can provide you with the steps on how to, how to do a VPN tunnel, and, and maybe that will give the client the, you know, the clarity on that, and then we can set that up so that you still get notifications. Sorry, does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah, it did answer my question. Thanks. Okay, um, no problem. Any other questions? Uh, not for not for my site. Okay. 
Okay, so I'll just I'll then continue to the next um, part that I just want to go through as well. Um, the fleet health. So the fleet health tab was again um, developed as I explained in a presentation for you to have the ability to um, you know look at the uh, how the fleet is operating. Um, for example, if we go to fleet health. There is the dashboards tab, and under the dashboards tabs, there's three dashboards that you can view. The first one, the current fleet status, will give you an overview if there's any issues with one of your devices. So you can see currently there's no health issues for either one of the four, no clock problems, no suspect data, um, and the overall data availability over all four is 98.67%, and you can get the individual data availability here. Now, if you click on one of them, it will give you a bit more information on that specific device. The, the first page is the repair status. And this is a good way of um, keeping track of any issues with the device. For example, if I start to notice there's GPS connection problems with a specific device, the, to make note of that is quite easy. You just click on update and you can update the latest note um, so that you have that in the history of what's happening with the device. If you have a lot of instruments on your network, you sometimes get overwhelmed um, to keep track of all of them. And this will just make it easier for you to keep track of that and um, know exactly what has, what's happening with each one of the units. Once all issues are resolved, you can put it back into good or in operation so that you know everything is fine. The next step on, on this dashboard is going to give you your more information on your health status. For example, time drift. Um, if you start to notice that the time start to drift away, you know that there's an issue with the GPS. Now, these gaps in the data is um, when the device was off, most likely um, interruptions on the network um, could be the reason for that. And then also more data such as the temperature, um, battery remaining capacity, um, and so on. The number of retries. So if, if you know there's no interruption to the device or, or no disturbance, the device is powered, but you see that the instrument is struggling to connect um, and the connection retries are high, you know there's an issue with the connectivity to the device, for example. Now, um, again, uh, as I said, this is most likely was periods where there was a network disturbance and that's why there was no uh, a large number of retries in that period. Um, and then just some other data to give you an idea if anything else is wrong, if there's no data, for example, being loaded um, or anything like that. So, and then the last one is just the latest health status, and this will just give you uh, an idea of when was the last connection, last statement reading, um, what's the firmware version, GP is it connected to GPS, information like that. So. This is a quite, that's basically the second dashboard, um, the one that I just went through is this one. And then the last dashboard, the fleet configuration status, is for you to keep track of the configuration of the instrument. Um, now you can see three of these are not commissioned. This one, this one is, and here you can see what what was or what is commissioned on this device. You can see 10 minute trends are enabled, and then three phase voltage dip and swells, and you have um, also billing enabled on, on this device. Now, the, the nice feature here is that you have the ability to go through history and see what changes was made previously um, to the configuration. So if there's, if you have a lot of uh, customers or a lot of um, colleagues that's on Osprey Pro with access to the device, this will keep track of any changes that's been made by anyone. So you can know when there was change made or uh, and it's now not operating as it was or something is wrong, you can actually, um, you know, take a 
account for who did that as well. Um, and this will show you exactly how it was set up, how it, the interface was connected, um, and so forth. So again, this will be covered in more detail in the, section, the, the session ne next month on how to commission it, um, how to set up these trends and monitors and, and so on, and what we recommend to enable normally. So we've seen a lot of times clients just enable everything, um, and that can definitely lead to issues um, as well. So that is the fleet configuration status dashboard to keep track of that. Any any questions on the fleet health um, portal? All right. Um, sorry, yes. Uh, this question again is concerning the relays, um, the output relays or the alarms. Do we now have possibilities to change our relays according to to as we want? Because I know in on version two, relays, the four relays, I think, were programmed by the software. So we as uh, users we never had possibilities to switch to, 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 to assign relays. Do we now have yes. possibilities yes. to assign relays to alarms? Yes, yes, yes you do have. So um, thank you for the question. There's, there's four relays. The, the first relay is by default um, connected to the device if it's recording. So the first relay you can't, um, set up, uh, change anything. The first relay is used to provide an indication if the device is recording or if it was powered off. So um, that's the first relay. But the, the second, third, and fourth relay, you can individually connect to any one of the monitors. For example, the three phase voltage dip and swell, you can connect it to a specific relay number. Um, okay, you can't do it on this dashboard. Of course, this one will only give you the overview of what was set up. Uh, but to do this, you can easily do it under the instrument itself. And again, this is actually in the next session. But as, as, I, as I explained, yeah, it's actually just two, three, and four. So ignore five and six. But the second, third, and fourth relay can be individually connected to any monitor. Um, and there's two ways that these relay can operate. The first one is auto reset, meaning that let's say, for example, there's a dip. The moment the dip um, starts, the relay closes. And when the dip stops, the relay open um, again. Now, if you disable auto re reset, the dip will only, when there's a dip, the relay will close and it will stay closed until you uh, manually reset it or until the next step happened. So that is, for example, that can be used, for example, if you want to use it as a counter to count the number of events. So it, it triggers and then triggers again when there's a next step. Um, so that's how, how the relays can operate the two ways. And as I said, you can connect it to any, let's for example, um, on voltage transients, you can connect it to any one of the relays like this. Um, any further questions? Um, no, not concerning the relays. All right, thank you. Uh, so under the admin portal, um, and this is mostly, this admin port will not be accessible by all users. Um, there's three users that you can set up on Osprey Pro. There's the admin or administrator user, and then there is the fleet manager and standard user. Now, depending on what user you are, will um, give you certain privileges of what what you can do and can't do on Osprey Pro. Now, only the administrator will have access to the admin portal, and this is where you will do your whole setup and configuration 
of all your devices. So this is also where you can add more users. Um, you can add shared users to your account. Now, a shared user is someone that was that already has an account um, somewhere else on Osprey Pro. Um, so, for example, a consultant, they have their own Osprey Pro account, but you want to give them access to your account um, to analyze data. You can give them shared access. And this all of uh, and that access can actually be time limited. So you can provide, you can only give them access, for example, for a month. Um, and so on. Now this will I will cover the, the the use cases of the admin user, fleet manager user, and the standard user when we get to that training session. I think in two months we'll start with the administrator user um, and to go through all these options of what you can do. Now this is also where you have your different campaigns, so you can enable your campaigns, activate, deactivate, um, and then set different meters on specific, or you know, add meters to the different campaigns. Now, these campaigns are by default already added to your Osprey Pro account. Um, so by default, the only campaign that's enabled is the Manage Power Quality to PQ Standard campaign, which will enable 10 minute uh, recordings and voltage dips and swells. Um, so, and that will make it easy. So all your devices that you add on Osprey Pro will automatically inherit that. So at least you'll have your 10 minute data recorded and steady phase voltage dip and swells. But as you can see, there's other campaigns that you can also enable that will add more configuration or enable more trends on monitors on your um, devices. Or you can individually also um, customize your configuration, uh, which I'll also cover in the next session. The measurement points um, tab is the list of your current measurement points. If you sum over, this is where you would add more measurements, measurement points, and then also um, customize or set it up. Um, so this is where you would configure and commission a specific measurement point. Then the instrument list is your list of instruments that you have on your account. So you can see there's currently four devices on this Osprey Pro account, and all four of them are already connected to um, measurement points. And we will also cover, cover this in the next session. And then going on, you have settings you can set up notes um, you can set up assets uh, so a note for example is if you measuring on the incomer of a substation and then two um, you know feeders or you know two load centers or something like that you can actually create a note and on that note you can generate different reports for example if you want to calculate the technical losses of a transformer, you can create a node for the incomer of the transformer and then the output of the transformer if you're measuring on both sides. And you can then generate a report that provides you the technical losses over that transformer, for example. So there's quite a lot you can do with that. Um, tariffs, this is where you set up tariffs. Now, by default, there is a list of tariffs already on Osprey Pro. You can add more tariffs if you want to. So not all of the South African tariffs are here. Um, you can also clone tariffs. So if you would like to create your own one, you can select one that's similar, clone it, and then just make the changes to that tariff. And then you can also connect it to a supply contract. So for example, in this case, there was a demo contract set up um, that uses this tariff and it starts on the 25th of the month for two specific supply points. Um, now, both of those are decommissioned, so um, I can't generate a report on them, but this is how you supply, you set up a supply contract, for example. Then cross trigger, which we'll explain in more detail later as well, um, or in other session, you can upload single line diagrams, add tags, 
So you can, for example, tag all your key customers, all your um, the points that are on HV or LV, NV, um, and then based on these tags, you can actually generate reports. So if you only want to view a consumption report on um, your uh, MV or LV meter points, you can do that. Or only your customer, key customers, all your your consumption of your key customers, for example, you can do that as well. Hi. Hi, Cecilia has a question. Sorry. Okay. Yes. Uh, static power asked if um, there is a maximum number of measurement points. Maybe um, just quickly mention about the difference between a measurement point for a vector three and our legacy Impedia Dio, and then also the investigation case. Okay. Um, to, to get to the question, um, no, there is not a maximum amount of list of measurement points. You can add as many measurement points as, as you want to, but where the limitation or um, threshold comes in is actually under instruments. Um, so under instruments, so you as I said, Hospital Pro is a licensed software and you would buy a license for a number of devices. And you can add up to that many devices on um, Hospital Pro. So you can have more measurement points than you have devices, but obviously then some of the measurement points will not be connected to a device um, and have the ability to record. But the Impedia Duo, for example, um, can measure two um, measurement points at once. So, for example, the Impedia Duo, you can have, you can only add one instrument or one license, but the ability to record two measurement points at once using that one recorder. Um, the Vector 2 and Vector 3 um, is only one measurement point per device, um, and so for the Vector Graph as well. Um, I hope that answers your question. Cecilia, do you want to add something here? That I'm yes. Most. yes, unfortunately, um, we are not able to um, produce in um, ideas at this current stage. Um, the component, international component market is extremely volatile and very difficult. And some of the components on, on that um, device is very difficult, um, to almost impo impossible to obtain at this stage. So at the moment, we are only uh, manufacturing the Vector 3. Um, and then we also have a um, investigation case. So that will be a hard pelican carry case with your three different harnesses, the voltage harness, power harness and current sensor harness um, that will be able to um, use to make a, a um, temporary installation. So typically if you are a um, engineer that need to do different, different investigations at different times, you will use this in investigation case with your US clamps and micro clamps to um, install the Vector 3 for a shorter period of time and also get a, a big, much better, um, more in detailed data collection, for example, three second um, data collection instead of every 10 minute data selection. Yeah, so adding to that also, um, we have the ability or the service to import Osprey Lite data to Osprey Pro. So if you um, maybe have devices currently that's using Osprey Lite and you want to upload that data to Osprey Pro, that is an additional service that we can provide for you to add that data um, to Osprey Pro for you to have it on the cloud and accessible um, from any device or to share it with um, you know anyone else as well. Also, we do um, also have rental devices. So um, some clients that um, do investigations, for example, and only need a device for a short period of time, you are more than welcome to contact us should you only want to uh, rent a device for a few days. Um, and then part of that rental will include access or include Osprey Pro uh, that will we will store the data for you for a certain period of time, depending on on the package that you select. Um, and as Cecilia said, you can then enable three second data or one minute data as well, um, because the the default settings of Osprey Pro only imports ten minute data. 
Um, so, and that is just due to the amount of data that it used to, um, you know, to import three second data or one second data due to the amount of data. So by default, only 10 minute data are imported. And then obviously all your monitors and trends that you set up. But should you want to do an investigation and you want to also have three second data or one minute data, for example, we can provide you for that service and, and upload that data to Osprey Pro as well. But that's not part of the standard um, Osprey Pro license. And, and obviously, um, the main benefit of importing your data from Osprey Lite into Osprey Pro is for um, generating reporting. So if you've got a specific standard that you need to report on or a specific um, request from, from your client that they um, want to see, it just saves so much time than to actually use the um, data from Osprey Lite. Yeah, and I think on, on that point, it's a good time to show you the, the reports that we can generate. Um, so if I go to the home reports tab, you'll see that there's three options, but there's actually two ways you can schedule reports. So as Cecilia mentioned, if I go into the ad hoc reports, this will, this is to generate a report on the fly. Um, it's not scheduled. It will not be sent to you regularly. It's only to generate it now. Um, you can schedule a whole list of reports. You can see this is the history of all my reports that I've created. Um, now, the, one of the main features that's different with Osprey Lite and Osprey Pro, and Osprey Lite, you only have the ability to generate a power quality um, or a site assessment to the NRS 048-2 standard report, but for the 2007 version of that standard. The Osprey Pro have that report, but for the latest um, 2015, and then for more international standards as well, where on Osprey Lite, you only have the EN 5160 on there as well. So that's one of the features. And then we also have additional reports that you can generate. If I just go down the list, for example, um, the billing verification report um, based on your supply contract and the tariff that you set up, a consumption report or a combined consumption report, data availability, your your voltage event. So to give you, sorry, to give you an overview uh, or summary of all your um, events of the whole enterprise. So um, well, this is a PQ summary, so it will only give a summary on your power quality of all your instruments. And then this is for your um, events of all your instruments, not just individually, to give you a, a summary of that. Then um, there is facility losses, um, key performance indicators, KPI benchmarking, um, power factor reports, and then the latest um, report that we've developed is a site assessment report based on contractual levels. So I know there's a big need for this in the IPP space because um, renewable plants or IPPs need to comply uh, against their TACOSA uh, contract. And they have different, they, they, there's limits for voltage unbalance, THD, um, and then also individual harmonics that they need to comply to to, pro to prove compliance um, with that standard and, and not just the standard power quality NRS compliance levels. Now, you have the ability to, and we'll also cover that in the next session, but the ability to set up that limits per for that measurement point. So if I um, I'm measuring on a point of connection of um, uh, IPP, you can specify and set up that the COSA limits for that specific point and then generate the report. So basically a compliance report um, based on that limits and not the NRS limits. Um, so this is definitely uh, one big report that we added recently. Um, and then as I said earlier, there's the technical losses report. So if you want to generate a report based on technical losses, uh, for that you need to set up the tags and set up nodes for the ability to do that um, as well. So 
this is the whole list of reports that you, you can generate. If I, if I quickly go back to reports, just to show you the difference between ad hoc and scheduled reports, again, you can create a report, um, selecting what report you want to schedule, give it a name, but then uh, actually schedule a time when this report needs to be sent to you. So this can be monthly, weekly, daily, and then at a specific time as well. So the reporting is really um, one of the features that, um, that we try and develop um, regularly and add more reports as we go on um, to give you the ability to obviously not just view the data, but also uh, to analyze it um, as well. So I think maybe, maybe uh, Cecilia, I yes, if you can show them where they can add a query um, or a request on your profile. Um, yes. Yes. On that okay. about. Yes. Um, so as I said, I mentioned you can also request for features. So under your account, there's the about um, base. This is where you will be able to see what's new. So um, you'll be able to see the version, current version that you're on and when that was updated. You can see the 27th of January, there was a, um, a update. And then what is new to that specific version or what bug was fixed um, in, in that. So you can see we are permanently developing and upgrading um, almost weekly. There's new releases. Um, so you can scroll through this and, and view all the latest features, but then also request for um, a feature or report a bug. So you can provide a subject um, and then some description on either the bug or the feature, and that will then automatically be locked on our account or on our system, um, and our developers will look at that and um, develop that as soon as possible. Anything else you want to add, Cecilia? No, I think that's good. Maybe just show us how our report looks like. I'm all excited now. <laughs> okay, so let us let schedule one report for. Um, I'm going to schedule just the standard power quality standard report. If you want me to do a specific one, you're more than welcome to to request that. Um, I'll do it based on the NRS standard. Then you can select the period. Um, your account. Now you won't be able to select the account uh, because you'll only have access to your account. I have access to um, more accounts um, on Osprey Pro and then the specific measurement point. Um, so if I select this measurement point and I look at the last 31 days, you can see I have data available um, for the whole of the last period up to today. So this is from the 1st of January up to the 8th of February. We have data available. So I can then schedule um, uh, what format I want to receive this report. It can be PDF and Word. A very nice um, about the Word report is that you have the ability, or not the ability, but we have um, vector graphic graphs on our Word report. So all our graphs are vector graphics. So this means you can, from the word, copy and paste graphs directly into another report um, up to the, you know, obviously best resolution. Um, there's no pixel changes or anything if you zoom into it. So let's, let's, um, I'm not sure why I can't schedule it on a demo account. Um, maybe I can show this to you on another account. Let me just log into that, sorry. I'll just quickly do a report. OK, select the measurement point, for example, uh, and then schedule it. So that will then add the report to the list. 
Um, it, you can see it's currently pending. And once this report is created, um, you'll get links to download the report. So, the, so to open a report for you so that you can see an example, I've created a report for um, this meter point. If I click on the PDF link, it will download the report and you can view it. So this is just a site assessment report, as I mentioned earlier. Um, and in here you'll have your voltage magnitude compliance, your voltage unbalance. Um, now this report I actually set up uh, for based on the contractual level. So for this specific meter point, I actually created specific limits. Um, just to test it. So, for example, I set the unbalanced limit to 0.2%. You can see this point is not, or this measurement is not complying. It's exceeding that um, unbalance, and you can view the 10 minute change over the last month that, that we've scheduled it for. Um, yeah, and then there's voltage flicker. Again, I created, I just set a random voltage or compliance level. You'll be able to see how the 95th percentile is comparing to that limit, how the maximum is comparing to that limit, and then obviously the average. And you'll get the long term flicker, short term flicker. Yeah, I'm not going to go into too much detail on that, but you can see this report is quite um, thorough and a lot of information. THD is well below that 8% limit. Um, so here's your voltage THD and your current THD over this period. And you can compare that with your, uh, your loading or your parent power as well. And then what events, the number of events, there were six step Y events and so it's a fourth way it falls on the scatter plot. Um, more information on that. And then also it compares your individual limits. So I created individual limits for the voltage harmonics. So it compares that to the individual limits and you can view the same for the current harmonics. And, and then if you scroll down, it will go individually through each one of the harmonics. So this is the fifth harmonic. Um, and you can view the trains for each harmonic. Um, up to the 55th. Or the 53rd rather. Any questions on, on reporting? All right. Yeah, so that is reports. Next to reports is the viewers tab. Um, and this is where you would view your um, general trends and events um, and also real time data. So you can well, you can view the data availability um, to view. So you can, for example, query uh, the data availability over a certain period. Um, I'm not sure why this button, or maybe the demo account is that's just disabled, but to give you an example, if I do the data availability for the 10 minute data for this account over the last month you can see the data availability when there was data and what devices are not recording um, and there's no data available for example then the second one is trends so this is our trend viewer so just on osprey light you can view um, the different trends that you want to record so for example then let me just view a trend of the last week. So there's different graphs you can plot, line graph, a dual axis line graph, scatter plot, harmonic spectrum, histogram, box plot was our latest um, type of graph that you can view. Um, again, you have your period that you can select. Um, and then, so let's, for example, plot a line graph. Um, I'm just gonna select a random Point and I'm going to, you select a meter, you select what data stream you want to view. So in this case, I want to view the 10 minute RMS data, but you can, if you record it and we imported a three second data, you can view that or the one minute data. And then we also have the harmonic. So it's, it's categorized on the type of um, data you want to view. So this is 
all RMS and this is all harmonic um, change. So you can view your 10 minute harmonic change for the third harmonic, for example. I'll show you an example now. So let's plot the voltage RMS. I select what I want to view and then I just click on plot. And then it generates um, the RMS voltage. All these are um, actually load shedding. So, so you can see during load settings how the voltage um, yeah, go down. And if you, for example, want to view harmonics, the 10 minute harmonics, and you want to view the, let's say, the current harmonics for the third harmonic. So you select what format you want to view in amps or percentage of rated current, what channels, what specific harmonic you want to view, um, and do you want to include the minimum and maximum during that 10 minute period as well, or just the average? And again, plot. And here you can see the third harmonic over the same period as the above. And these graphs you can move around. Um, we call it canvases, so you can um, move it, make it smaller as you would like, so you can add more graphs to this list. Um, and these also, the, the Osprey Pro user interface also automatically adjusts to the screen size of your device that you're using. So on your phone, the graphs will automatically adjust to the size of your screen so that you, you'll be able to view the whole graph. It's, it's obviously going to be small, um, but it automatically adjusts to that. Now these graphs you can export in different formats as, as images, PNG, or again in SVG, which is vector graphics format, or you can export the data, the CSV data for this graph as well. Um, yeah, maybe another nice plot to add here. Let me add the harmonic spectrum plot so you can see how that works. So we plot the, arm, the current harmonic spectrum for all three channels. It will create a graph. Let's give it a moment to load all the data. OK, and there's two new or a new section here on the right side of the page. This is how you scroll through this. So if we make, let's make the period a bit smaller, maybe just seven days, not the whole month. Oh, it was seven days. You can use this slider to move to a specific point in time and view what was your harmonic spectrum in that time or during that time. Um, you can also let it step through it automatically. So this slider um, adjusts the speed in which it sweet, um, steps through. If I make it quick, for example, and I click on play, it will step through it um, automatically and you can view how your harmonic spectrum changed over time. Right, so that is different sort of graphs that you can you can do on Osprey Pro. I mentioned earlier also that you have the ability to do JavaScript. Um, that is available under the advanced function of the graph. So if you click on this um, settings button here of the graph and at, under advanced, you have the ability here to um, to do JavaScript. So you can change the, the values, plus, minus, add to it, um, whatever you want to do. So let's say, for example, I only want to view the red face. I can do it by removing the plus or the minus here, or I can just return just the red face, and it's going to remove the blue and the white face. And then you can do further um, you know, calculations here as well. So then it basically the minus, it takes the declared voltage minus it, but then it gives you the output of that um, graph. So just an example of what you can do. 
Okay. Um, just want to see. I think that basically covers the, the trend viewer. Um, the instrument, the event viewer is similar to the power quality um, viewer or a power quality page. The power quality page, remember I said, is it groups all the events into or all the events that was caused by the same incident into one. Now, under the event viewer, you can view them individually. So each event, they're not grouped together. So if I filter for the last seven days, um, again, you can filter for different tags if you have set them up. Um, and I query for all of the events. It will then show um, all the events that was recorded over the last seven days for all the measurement points. Now, some of them under, again, as I said, under the power quality portal will be grouped like these are all the same at the same time. So they will be grouped together. But here you can view them individually and actually get more detail. So, for example, um, if I want to view the waveform data of this graph, I can click on it or this specific event and then click on detail on the top. And on here, you can, um, th there's different sort of uh, plots that you can do. We have added two new graphs, FFT and phasers. So let's just start with, if I want to view the RMS voltage during this event. Okay, um, obviously it's load shedding, so if I go to the event start, you can see there the event was it was at 100 percent of the declared, and then um, load shedding happened. You can view the waveform data as well. So again, I click on the line view, waves. If I want to view the wave voltage plot, and I just want to see the start of the event, there you can see. The, the waveform in the start of the event. But then we've added um, the FFT. So this will take the, a block of data and do an FFT of, on it. So I take FFT and I want to do an FFT of the wave voltage waveform. And I want to get the magnitude. Um, you can suppress the fundamental, suppress the DC if you want to. Um, you can join the consecutive waveform, so then it takes the whole event and do an FFT of that, or it takes 200 milliseconds of segments that you can scroll through to get the FFT of that. So let's just do that. Um, event start. So the first 200 millisecond block, you you'll get your um, FFT of that, um, and then. You can step through through sorry step through each 200 millisecond block of data. So in this case here yeah, you can see the frequency spectrum um, for the second 200 millisecond block, and this is up to 20 25 kilohertz, and you can do the same for the current um, waveform as well. And what can you do with this information? Why is it valuable? Now, this is um, this this can be very valuable if you want to do um, investigations. Now, for example, if you want to do uh, a study on the harmonic emissions of uh, a plant in again in renewables, um, you can look at the 10 minute data and the three second data, but there may be scenarios where you want to investigate the waveform. Um, and do an FFT of, of the waveform and see what the switching frequency is, for example. R remember, the, the trended data will only give you up to the 50 or 55th, uh, 53rd harmonic. Um, but to get higher harmonics and to view your higher harmonics, you'll need to do an FFT of the waveform, um, of the raw waveform. And, and this function will give you that ability rather than exporting the waveform and then running a Python script or something on that to or a MATLAB script to get the FFT, you can do it on Osprey Pro. So if you set a trigger up correctly um, on Osprey Pro to trigger a waveform recording, 
you can then use that recording and do an FFT on that um, to get, you know, to view your, um, your, your switching frequency, for example. You can also um, do a scheduled recording or a, a, a triggered um, snapshot, basically. So if you don't want to wait for some event to trigger, so let's say you want to trigger when there's a transient and you want to then view the waveform of the transient and do an FFT, you can do that. But if you want to just get a general idea of, of your network, you can do a you can actually generate a snapshot and you do that by going to home tools and then scheduling um, a timed recording or a snapshot. The difference between the two is that a timed recording will only do um, will only trigger on one specific measurement point where a snapshot will take a snapshot of or basically record waveform data on all of your meters on your um, account. Um, so if I can do an example of this, so let's say I want to do a timed recording. Um, I can select for what specific point I want to do um, a timed recording. So let's select um, that specific measurement point and you can then specify should this recording start immediately or be scheduled to happen at a specific time. So if I start this immediately, I can select the duration. Let's just make this maybe um, a bit longer. Um, how many times it needs to do this recording um, and then the interval and then what data needs to be recorded. So um, I'll just make that one interval and I want to record everything. So now if I do this, it's going to take zero. It's going to take 0 0.4 seconds. It's, it's going to do a timed recording for 0 0.4 seconds of the waveform um, and store that and give you that data. So if you give it time, I can view that to you under um, events. So under home events, you'll be able to view this recording. So just need to give it a time to send the data to Osprey Pro, but it will be on this list. And you can then view the waveforms and, for example, do a FFT on that um, on that as well. So it's it's a method of you know um, yeah generating different sort of graphs that you would for a very specific um, investigation report. So I'm just waiting for this. Might take a, a, a while. Hein, I think our time is starting to run out. Yes. Maybe um, we should give um, opportunity to by a raise of hands if there are any more questions that, that you want to ask. And then also just give a quick um, rundown of what the next session, next the second Tuesday of March will be about. OK. Um, so the next session in, in March will be on the installation and commissioning of the Vector 3 devices. So that would be um, using Osprey Lite to do the commissioning, but also using the web interface, which we prefer um, going forward from here. Um, and then how to commission that device on Osprey Pro. So how to get the instrument on Osprey Pro, um, attach the instrument to the measurement point, um, and being able to set up the configuration to start recording the correct data that you want. And, and then obviously there will be detail on how to install instruments uh, for different applications. It may be single phase, or if you have a four wire network, uh, start topology or, and the different ways you can you connect uh, for transducers or current inputs directly. Um, so that will be the, uh, the the theme of the next session. Um, uh, yeah, please, you're more than welcome to also sign up for that one. Um, but yeah, so you can see before we get to questions, the time recording here. So let's, you can see there's a timer event that was scheduled by myself. I can um, view the detail of that event. So now I have basically recorded the waveform um of what's happening now so and you can then on this do an fft so let's do an fft of the wave current
and there you can see um, third harmonic, fifth harmonic is quite high, and and so on. So a very nice additional tool um, for you to use in generating your reports, uh, and so on. So maybe any any questions? I think we have twelve minutes left before the official end of the session. Um, any questions? Okay, looks like no questions. Maybe Han, um, I'm not sure if it was mentioned, but one of the key things that are important for the clock synchronization is that the uh, GPS antenna is installed outside of the building, so it must see blue skies. Yeah, now, so so to get that clock synchronization um, to ensure that you get matching of incidents. Now that may not be that important for everyone. If you only, for example, do a s investigation of one unit, you don't necessarily need clock synchronization um, from all of your devices um, as you're only looking at one and maybe to synchronize that with your PC time or um, internal clock is sufficient. But if you have a whole network of devices and you want to ensure that they all are synchronized to the same time to be able to do that matching of incidents and, and to Osprey Pro to correctly group them into different incidents, um, it's important to install the GPS, but not just um, in the substation, but specifically in the outside, uh, usually against the wall of the substation so that you get a clear view of you know, sky, so no interference, no um, metal interfering with the signal or concrete interfering, nothing. So you have a clear signal and you have no issues with that. So, um, so that is quite important. I will also be mentioning that next week, some, some important considerations when doing installation. There's some few tips that I can give um, in the session next week as well, Ach, not, net, not next week, next month. Um, so please join um, if you'd like to get that as well. OK, um, maybe if you after the session have any questions or want any more information. Um, I know there's a lot of things that I went through and there may be some things that I skipped. Uh, you're more than welcome to contact us or contact myself. For, for more information. Um, I don't think I've provided my email on Teams yet, but I'll just put that in the comments as well. Uh, and then, um, uh, Pe yes. Peter has got a question for us. Okay, yes, Peter. One thing I would like to see, sorry, Hein, uh, thank you very much for the presentation, it was very good. Um, I would like to see um, maybe a demonstration, of sort of a typical event um, that could happen on a network and yes. how one would uh, best um, see it because typically what would happen is you, you it's, it happens on a weekend uh, nobody's at work and uh, you have facilities and ways to, to to cater for such a thing because I think your web interface so if I'm now sitting at home obviously I won't I, I would like to be notified of the event so how best yes. is that uh, set it up so that I get a notification, maybe via my cell phone or whatever. Then I would like to uh, okay. Then how best would I respond? Uh, I would probably connect to to the web interface system because my machine, my work machine is at work and I'm at home. And I would like to see what happened. Maybe there is a way to do that sort of thing yes. uh, for an engineer that now sits at home, but would like to know what happened on on, on the network. Um, yes, some, something like that could be demonstrated perhaps as well. Okay. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, so Peter, which is very nice about Osprey Pro is um, if obviously it's connected to the, our Osprey Pro database, um, you can gain access to that events uh, from anywhere. Um, you don't, you know, you can, as I said, on your phone, on the road, at a site, as long as you have internet connection, um, now, if I just quickly first go to where you set up 
um, for notifications. So that is done under your profile and subscriptions. I'll demonstrate now for a specific event. But here is a specific notification that you need to enable, network disturbance. Um, and you can enable that for email or for push notification. But most likely, if you're not at your computer, um, you don't want to enable just push notifications. You want to get a notification on email. Um, now, in that email, um, I don't think I have an example, unfortunately, to show you how the email will look. Um, but just the moment that email or that event happens, so if I quickly go to a specific event, for example, um, let's just look for uh, one that you can expect, like this event. Um, the moment this event closes, you'll get a notification of this event that will report these, this information to you. Now, in that email will be a link. And that link, if you click on it, will take you, if I click on this, to this page. Um, so you'll immediately have access to this. You don't need to, if you're logged into Osprey Pro in the past, you don't need to log in from any device. You can then gain access to it um, and analyze it immediately. So you'll be able to see that this event was triggered on a number of points. Um, and you will be able to analyze the first thing you can, you can obviously see, look if there's any fault current, um, if you, depending on obviously where you're connecting. In this case, I suspect this is most likely coming from the grid. Um, so it's upstream that is also specified here at the source direction. So that um, all of these, they, well, most of them um, suspect that this is an upstream event. And then you can analyze this. So. I don't think there's more for me to demonstrate, Peter, than, than this. This is exactly what you'll see um, when you click on the event. Well, that's very useful. Yeah, thank you very much. That's, that's kind of thing that I'm looking for. That sort of functionality is really, really, uh, I think, the, the best selling point of your product. I think that's, that's fantastic. Thank you. Yeah, no, definitely. And, and as I said, which is very nice, is you can then um, tag it, for example. So if you see this and you know, this is uh, coming from the grid. You can create a tag like there's a number of tags that I've created for this client um, and, and you can tag it so that you can search for it in the future. You can do that from your phone anywhere or you can then provide more information to this uh, which to report on um, and immediately actually generate a report by just clicking there. So it's a lot of functionality. If you want to analyze the waveforms in more detail, to do that, I haven't actually demonstrated that. Uh, this is, there's actually a button for that. This is this event viewer button on the bottom. The moment you click on, on this, it will take you to a new screen. Now, basically, just ignore this screen. You will just want to click on query and then click on all. And it will then basically give you all the events, single events that was grouped into this incident. And you can individually click on one of them or all of them or a specific one that you maybe want to look at. Let's say you, there was a full current at this point and you want to get more detail on that. You can click on it and similarly as you would for the normal event viewer, click on detail and plot whatever you want. If that's, you can plot the RMS, you can plot scatter plots, the FFT as I said. So let's, for example, show you demonstrate a phaser, which is also very nice. Um, if I just quickly plot the RMS voltage and I then plot the phaser um, of the fundamental voltage. OK, it, it, and I play through this. Um, you can see here it plays through it. I hope this there was a small bug here, so I hope it's been fixed. It works correctly on a star system. Um, but you can see how the vectors change during an event. Um, this is very helpful if you try want to you can get a good overview of, of the voltage vectors or the current, for example. So Peter, I hope this answered your question. Um, and then obviously you can export the graphs immediately. Oh, no, that's very detailed. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Okay. Uh, anything else from, from anyone? Willem asked a very interesting question. He asked, is there a method to do a total harmonic of a snapshot 
And um, our CEO just walked in here, Willy, and I showed him the the question, and he, he got a grin on his face, and he said, that's a loaded question. Um, so, Willem, I will um, forward your request to him, and he will personally get back to you. So, it's not a yes or a no answer. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Cecilia. Um, yeah, I think the time is, is basically up. Um,